Hello. In this video, you will learn how to apply Lagrange interpolation to a series of xy values and how to plot the resulting curve of the Lagrangian polynomial versus the given data points. So, let's start. The interpolation is a method used to find one or more intermediate values into a series by calculating them from surrounding given values or points using a mathematical function. In interpolation, the given data points should satisfy that function. For example, for the four data pairs of xy values, which are shown here as red points on the graph, the curve of the interpolation function px correspondent to these points should pass through all of these points. Now, if we have an x value, let's call it xp, located between x1 and x2, for example, we can find its corresponding value of yp directly from the interpolation function px. Lagrange interpolation depends on the Lagrangian polynomial where the old values of the given data are included. For example, the Lagrangian polynomial for this data set can be written as shown here. Now, if you perform the multiplication in each term, you will get a component of the interpolation polynomial p of x. So the final polynomial can be obtained after the summation of these components. You may have noticed that for four given points, the interpolation polynomial is the sum of four terms. Each term gives a cubic equation. After summation, the degree of the overall interpolation polynomial, px, will also be cubic. As a general rule, the number of the given points is always larger than the degree of the Lagrangian polynomial by 1. This means we cannot select the degree of the polynomial unless we change the number of the given data points. The polynomial can be written in terms of the polynomial components multiplied by the corresponding y value of each term. And that can be expressed in the form of a summation for i equals to 0 to n, where n here is equal to 3. Before writing the algorithm of the general Lagrangian interpolation polynomial, let's write a general formula for the components shown here. As an example, let's start with the first component, p sub 0 x. You can notice here that each numerator includes the variable x minus the given x value except x0. Similarly, the denominators are x0 minus all other values. This helps us to establish a relationship between the subscript of each component and the values of x on the right-hand side. Accordingly, we can write this general form for these components. This form shows that each component is equal to the product. So the sign you see here means the product. That means the terms are multiplied to each other for the values of j from 0 to n. But there is a condition that j should not be equal to i. Because if j equals to i, that means we will get xj minus xj, which is 0. That means that term will be divided by 0. Now, we can write the final algorithm by combining these two general formulas. So, as you see here, the outer operation is the summation of each component multiplied by the corresponding y value. And the inner operation is the product of the x terms. The same order will be used to create the outer and inner loops for interpolation process during the coding. We have the data table of values of x and y. We need to know the value of y when x is equal to 50. Here we use Python lists for simplicity as the uh, basic form of the Lagrange interpolation. Now let's define the number of the data points. And we can define also the degree of the polynomial as m minus 1. Of course we can use m, uh, the number of data points, 
uh, directly in our loops but here because the uh, algorithms are defined uh, with n uh, so we use the degree of the polynomial now let's define the x value here so we call xp equals 50 we defined yp as 0 now why we defined yp as 0 because actually yp is the summation so we will use a summation loop so the initial value of the summation should start from uh, 0 now let's start the for loop the first or outer loop uh, in range n plus 1 now we define the uh, p small or the uh, components or the terms of each uh, part so uh, these components are multiplied to each other so actually p is the product so the initial value of the product should start from one because we will multiply the values of, uh, to each other so the multiplier uh, should start from uh, one for j in range the second loop again the same way because both summation and uh, product loops go from 0 to n we have a condition for the product which is if j is not equal to i then you can perform the uh, product multiplication so is equal to xp minus x j over xi minus xj we need to go back to the loop of summation to define yp so here yp will be the summation of y of i or yi multiplied by the values of p obtained from the inner loop finally print let's write 4 is equal to four. now let's test this code in order to test the correctness of this value because we don't know if it is correct or not we have a condition that in interpolation the curve or the interpolation function should pass through the points that means if I enter the value of x values from the table I should get y values from the uh, given data also or from the table let's make it more flexible let's say float input now let's run the code let's say 20 and as you see it gave us y corresponded to 20 exactly let's make another test let's say um, 80 let's modify the code by using numpy arrays so first of all let's import numpy then we define x and y as numpy arrays now we will make a modification in the uh, loops and instead of using the uh, indices or the index i and index j uh, i'll try to use the uh, values of x directly in the loop so that means we can here remove or neglect the definitions of m and n and instead for i let's say for xi in x so in this way xi is an iterator that means it's a variable which takes the values of 
the array x one by one. Now, the second thing we're going to remove or eliminate the loop of j totally in this way. Now, the question is this, how can we apply the condition? Now, one of the properties uh, of NumPy arrays that we can apply the conditions as conditional indices. And instead of using x, j here, we can say we want the values of x where x is not equal to xi. Again, we can apply the same condition here because we have x, j in both points. So x not equal to xi, the value, the current value of uh, x. Now, here we will notice something important that we cannot use the um, multiplication operator in this way. Instead, we should use product function of NumPy. When we go to yp, we notice still we have the index i. So we can get rid of this. One of the properties of the for loops that we can use two variable for loop in this way. So we can say loop for xi and yi in x and y in order to give the values of x, y arrays to x, i, and y, i in the correct sequence, we should use the function zip. Let's try to run this code and see the result. So as you see, we obtained the same value at y corresponding to x equals to 50 you notice that we have p uh, has been repeated here, p and p. So instead of two equations or two lines in the for loop, we can reduce it more to only one line. yp plus yi multiplied by this value, and then we remove... So let's run the code again in order to test it. Again, let's use 50, the same value. Let's run the code for other or another one, five. Let's say 60. The final part of this tutorial is to show how can we plot Lagrangian polynomial for this data set. First of all, we should add or import the uh, matplotlib we need to define two arrays for all points located on the curve line so let's call it in this way x plot or x values of the plot uh, mp lin space this is linear space function and the start point is x zero. It's better to use the 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 signs the um, symbols instead of values. So instead of using zero, we can use x zero. So the code will be more general. And x minus one, the last value in the uh, array. Uh, also, we can add uh, the number of points uh, in the linear space. The default number, as you see here on the screen, is 50. Again, y plot. Here, we define an umpy array, which is empty. Empty. Uh, array because during the uh, running the code we will append 
the comp calculated values of y pi of y p sorry to the uh, y plot. The next step is to add a loop which goes through the values of x p l t in order to plot every point of this uh, curve of the polynomial. So we start with four xp in xplt. So xp now will be the values of the 50 points defining the xplt array. Now all these statements will be inside this loop so we need to indent them to the right altogether. Now of the calculation of each value of yp we should append the value of yp to yplt. So it will be equal to mp append the um, append function in numpy requires the yplt and the yp value and the reason that we have to use the equal sign here in order to update the value or the size of yplt because uh, numpy append uh, does not change yplt without using the assignment uh, to the left hand side we can go to plot functions but let's delete this print so we we'll begin by plotting the values of x and y the points the given points and we make them red circles so r stands for red and the small o for uh, circles then we plot the calculated values or the uh, values of xplt and yplt and we can make them like blue continuous line now let's add uh, x label simply an x and y label then we show the result now let's run the code as you see here we obtain the curve of this uh, polynomial of uh, Lagrange interpolation which passes through the all given uh, values if you like this tutorial please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified for the coming videos thank you